How did I afford to live while I was at Harvard Law School? In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the best three jobs that I had while I was a student at Harvard Law School. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sydney Montgomery, and I'm CEO of S. Montgomery Admissions Consulting, where I specialize in working with first-generation and minority law school applicants. And y'all, law school is expensive, and it is hard to budget for all of your personal expenses while you're trying to go to school and live, especially if your law school is in an expensive city. And Cambridge is an expensive city. Cost of living is a real thing. So how on earth did I afford to manage it all? I always get questions from students like, how do you afford the personal budget? Like, do you work while you're in law school? How on earth do you afford rent while you're in law school if you don't have a job? What does it mean to go to law school full time? How do you pay for anything in your life? Well, I'm gonna break down how I got through Harvard Law School with my medical bills because I developed an autoimmune disease and a connective tissue disease while I was in law school. I didn't know it really at the time. I just knew that stuff was not right health-wise. And so I was always in Ubers. I was always in doctor's offices and I was studying and I was trying to live in this apartment and I was trying to pay my credit card bills and just kind of generally survive. I was 21 when I started law school. I graduated at 24 and I have to tell you my financial literacy skills, they could have been better. So I wanna break down the three best jobs that I had while I was at Harvard Law School and why you should definitely consider adding these to your job portfolio if you're thinking about working while you're in law school. The first job I wanna to talk to you about is being a tutor. The second job is being a nanny. Shout out to my kids, they were fantastic. And the third job is actually working for your housing. And I wanna break that down a little bit for you. But first, let's talk about being a tutor. So I was a piano teacher. I guess I still am a piano teacher. You never really lose those skills. I've been playing the piano since I was five. And I have always been a hustler, always. Um, I started teaching piano when I was 12 because listen, there were neighborhood kids, I had a piano, there were dollars to be made, okay? And that entrepreneurial spirit, obviously, it's no shock that I currently run my own business because I just have always felt the need to have my own. My parents both worked two jobs. We didn't come from a lot of money. We still don't have a lot of money. I take care of a lot of my sister's educational expenses. She's in high school. And so we just, you know, the hustler is just in me, right? Like that's just how I was raised. That's just the mindset that I have. And so when I, you know, got to law school, I was like, okay, cool, cool. We need to make money because life is expensive. The first thing is you should always try to capitalize on your skills. You have knowledge that someone else does not have. Uh, whether that is being a math tutor or a piano teacher or a French tutor or whatever, and yes, I did all three of those, um, you want to be able to capitalize on those skills. So there's actually a lot of places that you can go. You can go to like care.com. That's where I got a lot of my tutoring clients. Sometimes schools will have their own exchanges or websites, um, especially for like staff or faculty or professors in the area they're looking. So I started off as a math tutor for this family in Cambridge. And um, I mean, there are some bad things about living in a really expensive city, but the good things are that the parents that live in this really expensive city are generally willing to pay big bucks. So I got paid really nicely to tutor uh, seventh grade math. Um, it was like not the most enjoyable thing I've ever done, but um, it was really, really easy. I just went, I took the bus after class uh, to Central Square. I like walked a couple blocks, went to this like brownstone house, tutored this girl for an hour, and then collected my cash. It was a really great arrangement. Sometimes they would even leave snacks and food and they were fantastic cooks, they were Italian, so I was also eating very well. That was a fantastic arrangement. We did that for about a year. On top of that though, I also, um, taught piano. So I took a bus, really got to know the Cambridge Boston bus system well, but took another bus um, to this very lovely family. And I taught a 15 year old boy how to play piano for a little bit. 
and I usually did that on Saturday afternoon. Sometimes they had brunch. Guess what? I too sometimes had brunch. There is a theme here that I'm connecting with all my jobs. And then I did also tutor a student in French. Um, again, took the bus. Actually, I think for that one, I might have taken the tea to Alewife, walked a couple of blocks, and then, you know, tutored French for an hour. His grandmother was really sweet. Um, he was just really struggling in French. All of these things were not very time intensive. Like, yeah, I had to take buses and teas, but I did reading on the bus or on the tea. I was there for about an hour, and I usually made anywhere from about $25 to $60 an hour. Okay? So I was making over $100 a week for about three hours of work because, again, I was doing reading and studying on the bus and on the T. My real piece of advice is no matter what kind of job you work, especially your 1L year, it needs to be high pay, low hours. We don't have time for this, you know, 20 hours a week, $10, $15 an hour situation like that is going to be such a drain on you, especially in your first year of law school. It's going to be so hard. And a lot of law schools have rules about how much you can work your first year because they want you to study and focus. So I'm always like, how can I make the most amount of money for the least amount of time? And there are definitely creative ways to do this. And so I want to encourage you to find those ways. Don't just you know, take that high hour job that is not paying you very much because you probably aren't able to even study in that job, right? And so that brings me to the second kind of job, which is nannying. Guys, get you a nannying gig. I nannied through college. I can't tell you how many families I nannied in the Princeton area. Um, I'm actually still really close to some of the girls that I worked with uh, because they were in middle school and high school and now they're in college or some of them are, you know, getting ready to graduate college. And so they're real people and real adults. Um, and it's really lovely. What I love about nannying is that if you get the right family, you do become part of that family. So a lot of times when you nanny, the parents will say something like, eat whatever you want in the fridge. I told you there was a theme with my jobs. The food situation is just a lovely bonus that I look forward to all the time. Okay. So they would often be like, you know, whatever is in the fridge, whatever is in the pantry, just go ahead and eat whatever you want. It'll be great. Um, what I did in law school is I picked two little boys up who I'm actually still pretty close to the family. Um, but I picked two little boys up from school and they went to school kind of honestly, like 20 minutes from their house. And I actually found this like, I think it's called my fold. It's like a portable car seat situation that I found on Amazon because I had to take the kids in an Uber. It was way too far to walk or I take the tea. I wasn't taking the tea or the bus with these two little boys. It was just, that was just going to be a hassle. So Uber was my lifeline. I had that Uber pass situation, but I found that my fold. I uh, got it on Amazon. It goes right in the kid's backpack. He takes it to school with him. He comes out, we unfold it, sit him on it. It moves the, um, the seat belt. I guess it's kind of like a foldable booster seat, not quite a full car seat, but a foldable booster seat. And everyone was legal and compliant and away we went home. Okay, so I would talk to the kids. Um, They're actually Francophone, so I talked to them in French, which was cool for me because I got to practice my French. And we would get home. And guess what, guys? Kids have homework. It's great. You have homework. They have homework. So we'd get home, and it was homework time. What that means is that I got to do my reading while getting paid to sort of watch them do their reading. It's a fantastic arrangement. And then they went off to play. And I did more reading. Y'all catching the drift, right? And then, you know, I made sure that everyone had dinner. We had dinner together. We did some more fun talking. And then the parents came home. And actually, they usually gave me a ride home. So I didn't even have to Uber home. It was a fantastic arrangement. I definitely uh, made a good amount of money. I did it like six hours a week, like two afternoons from three to six, roughly. And it was honestly one, a really great way to get out of the law school space because 
law school be can become just this echo chamber of stress, 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 and outlines and, you know, all this stuff, right? And sometimes it's really good to remember like, oh, yes, there are real people with real houses and real kitchens and real families and, you know, children. There's more to life than outlining and exams and Barbary, right? That's a really healthy reminder to have in your life. And so I really enjoyed how that broke up my week. I think it kept me really grounded and really sane. Um, it was also really nice. Like I said, I went to law school when I was 21. And even though I might have thought I was a big bag adult, I was still a child. A young adult, right? Child. Um, it can be kind of nice to have some like parental people just that know you and your whereabouts because if there's something that goes on right god forbid there was an emergency i remember one time i had to fly home kind of quickly that family came and took me to the airport right like i don't have family in boston or cambridge i, I was kind of on my own but having those connections with these families because when you take care of their children i mean that's a special bond that's that's really not something to take lightly and and after all i stayed with them for two years right like we really got to know each other. They came to my graduation. They're in my like big graduation uh, family photo with all my aunts and uncles and cousins and, and that family, right? Because they like were there with me, supporting me as I supported their kids. And, you know, now I still like visit every so often and we still text and, you know, the boys have really grown up and, and that's such a special bond. And I think it actually really adds to just your time in law school and um, to like the richness of your ability to interact with the community that the law school is in. It gives you an understanding of, okay, who are the people that live around here? Who are we serving? And, you know, what are the things that they care about? I learned a lot about local politics from that family as well. So there's just so much. It's really like, you know, of course you benefit financially, but there's so many other benefits to that that I would definitely, definitely recommend that. And like I said, I got a lot of my homework done because there was also nothing really else to do. So when I'm in my own apartment, I am distracted by watching TV or like, you know, whatever, you know, taking a nap, talking to people. Uh, when you go somewhere else, and I don't really like libraries, but when I went to Nanny and they're doing their homework, it really made me be like, okay, yes, and me, it's, it's homework time. I was sometimes way more productive when I was nannying than when I was at home. So that's just something to think about. Now, the third job I want to talk to you about is working for your housing. This really only works if you live in student housing, and I lived in Harvard University-owned apartments. Um, and it was actually really lovely. I, I was kind of like a, a community resident assistant situation. It's not like undergrad, you know, you're not like checking on people, like everyone's a grown adult, everyone has their own apartment. But we were in charge of throwing sort of study breaks, fun activities. I think I had to throw two or three a year and then maybe go to two or three. These happen maybe once a month. And it could have been anything. So I remember I did a step workshop because I was on a step team in college. So, you know, six people showed up and I taught them how to step. And also we ordered smoothies from Be Good. And you get a budget to do that. So that was cool. Or I took people to Alden and Harlow, which is a restaurant in Cambridge, uh, for a tasting night. Love that restaurant. Super expensive. Cannot afford it. However, shout out to having a budget when you work for your housing because that's how we were able to afford it. Or, you know, we did a thing with aromatherapy and essential oils and, um, you know, making our own essential oil recipes for like hair and skin and beauty. And again, did not have to pay for it because there's a budget, but it was also really fun. So I basically got paid to do really fun things I couldn't afford to do and have a study break. It was a good setup. It was a really good setup. And then you get to go to other people's events, and they usually do pretty cool things too. So that actually took money off of my rent. Uh, I didn't get paid actually a check, but my rent was reduced by I think three or four hundred dollars a month, which is honestly pretty substantial. And I gained a community. I learned about a lot of things. I got to go to very cool events. I got to think up really cool events that I really wanted to do. I, again, got out of the rat race of law school and, and got to, um, you know, really have this moment, this break. I got, you guessed it, 
free food, <laughs> lots of free food. And it was just, again, another way to enrich my law school experience. Now, I didn't really study during these events, but having three or four hundred dollars off your rent is great for honestly, probably three hours of work a month. It really doesn't get better than that, like at all. Again, we're talking about that high pay, low hours. So there are a lot of opportunities like that. I think I'm like a professional like money hustle finder, but there are a lot of opportunities like that where you actually can, you know, make a lot of money without having so much time come out of your study schedule or, you know, your law school schedule, that way you're actually able to balance everything. And when you have that and you're not financially stressed, it allows you to have more clarity with your classes. It allows you to feel better and feel grounded and more balanced in life as a whole. It's really good for your mental health. It's really good for your well-being. It feeds the soul. It keeps you from getting depressed and getting stressed out and getting burnt out because you have these breaks. And again, it helps make your law school time a little bit more affordable so that you are not trying to figure out how you're paying all these bills while you're going full time to law school. I thoroughly believe that you can absolutely work while going to school. I worked, you know, two jobs in Princeton. I worked three jobs at Harvard Law School. But I don't believe that that means that you need to have 80-hour weeks. I think there's ways that you can work smarter and not harder. And I'm super happy to help you figure that out. So if this video was helpful, make sure that you share it with a friend. Uh, click that like button, subscribe to this channel, and let me know what are the financial questions that you have about the law school process, whether that's financial questions about getting into law school or those are financial questions about being in law school and being able to afford it or even financial questions about coming out of law school. How do you deal with your loans and your debt? Put them in the comments. We're going to be doing more of these financial videos. So I'd love to help you break those cycles of generational poverty and debt and step into your wealth and into your future. I'll talk to you guys very soon.